So here we are again with the PC9821 AS2, and I got a big old wad of capacitors in the mail today. So we're going to be repairing the computer today, and um, I guess I'll we'll first start with a uh, teardown of the machine. So obviously, first thing to do is take off the easy to remove front pa or front panel. I've only taken this apart once before, so I'm not like a pro or anything, but. First thing I would probably suggest doing is removing the CBUS cards because uh, at some point you do remove the back panel here and uh, it does not have any rigidity on its own so once you take the top off it's kind of a pain in the butt to get this, these cards up because they uh, require quite a bit of force and uh, yeah, there's not really much to push on when, you, when your back panel is kind of floppy so we're just going to take these out real quick. This one has uh, plastic tabs you can push on to make it easy to remove. All right, so there's uh, four screws you'll want to remove to take the, the top off the uh, computer. Then you got one screw on each side, sort of like uh, old stereo equipment almost. They're even recessed like old stereo or equipment. Well, I know how much I hate it to have Discord notifications in the background, so I'm going to cut that out. This should come off. I think it pushes to the back and then lifts right up. And that's the inside of a PC98. As you can see, its, uh, it's internals are quite a bit different than a standard PC. It's uh, a bit more proprietary and uh, compact, I guess. Uh, we'll start by taking the cover off the uh, CPU. Uh, cage here. These two screws are slightly different than the uh, outer case screws. As you can see this is where the CBUS cards are. That's the back plane for the uh, the cards so that's what it plugs into. This top just comes right off. And here you have two circuit boards. One for memory and one for uh, the CPU. If we pull the CPU one out, it's also got the uh, plastic clips that you can uh, pull up with. The CPU board seemed empty. When I first took the computer apart before I even started up, I'm like, wait a minute, where's the CPU at? And then, oh, hello. So that's only for upgrading if you wanted to throw a DX266 in here. I think it'll only supports a DX266, unless you got a specific uh, overdrive processor for it, because um, I think the bus speed is locked at uh, 33 megahertz. The voltage that the uh, socket puts out, or the computer runs on, is 5 volts, so you can't use any of the uh, newer 3.3 volt CPUs. Unless you got a specific overdrive on that to burst the voltage. And in the back we have a uh, memory board, which is a little bit less populated when I first, than uh, when I first got it, because I took some memory out. Let me uh, show you here. I took some of this memory out so that it would uh, boot a little bit faster, because I don't really need... 47 megabytes on a uh, computer this old one. I'm not going to be running like Windows on it, but this is like a third-party uh, product here. As you can see, it's a virtual EMS board from Buffalo, so it's kind of kind of cool. I wonder if um, what if the computer has any built-in memory on the circuit board or the main board itself. If that's going to be like some sort of optional thing, or unless they changed the original memory board. Anyway, so. This is where the fun starts. All right, let's turn it back around. First, we're gonna be taking off the back plate here. So there's only a couple screws. You can see it's pretty loose right now. That's why I wanted to take the cards out first. So this taking this thing apart is a little bit kind of a pain in the butt when I don't have uh, longer screwdrivers because a lot of these screws that we'll have to take out requiring quite a bit of a long reach. However, you can sort of stuff this screwdriver down in there and make it work, but it's not ideal. So you might want a longer screwdriver. Oh, I forgot one screw. That's the ground. There you see the uh, back of the power supply. Power supply comes off pretty simply. You just got three screws here. And this is interesting because this power supply obviously is not very similar to what we have. Whoa, it just pulls out. It's got a connector on the bottom that connects us directly to the motherboard and the, there's the power button. However, the, uh, the button in the front is basically just a long stick here, sort of like a Packard bell. So 
when you want to install the power supply, you want to make sure that's to the forward so you don't slap that thing with the uh, with the uh, actual button here and possibly breaking things or not making the proper connection and getting frustrated. And I think the next thing I take off is the cage surrounding the the CPU. I mean, I could take off the, the CBUS thing here, I think. No, I have to take the CPU one off. So, if we look down in here, you can see that there is uh, four screws and uh, the edges of the uh, two housings here kind of overlap in the back, so whatever one's on top is the one you're going to be taking off, which will be the CPU cage. So, in order to do, in order to do that, you'll have to uh, disconnect the power LEDs and the uh, the disc LED and the speaker, and then that should come right out. And this should just start coming right out. Just gotta unplug those, and bam, your uh, CPU cage is off. When you take one of these apart, you gotta make sure you have plenty of space to put stuff because all this kind of takes up a lot of space. So, um, let's get this, uh, get this cage off. This is kind of a pain in the butt because there's a screw right here and right here, and there's not really, this screwdriver doesn't really cut it. So, this uh, back plane should shut, or come right off. However, of course, it is connected to the motherboard, so it's going to take a little bit of rocking and force to get off here. And as you can see, I've revealed another cool little um, upgrade that I was not even aware of until I took it apart. This is the uh, an S3 Windows Accelerator board, which is kind of nice because that means you can have a nice fast Windows with uh, the backwards compatibility of the like you know AP2 for games and stuff. So you can also remove that. We'll probably take that off here in a bit. You gotta, you gotta be careful with that one. It's uh, kind of mounted in there a little bit weird. And the next thing to remove is the uh, drive assembly here. So this whole drive assembly comes off in one piece, which makes a uh, repair. It's kind of, kind of simple and easy. It's uh, connected just to the main board right there. And um, the whole thing picks up drives and all. So. We'll just have to uh, take the screws out. There's a screw down in here and down in here. So it's kind of a pain. There's also a screw right here. This one's the easiest one to get to. Once again, this is another spot where a long screwdriver would be helpful. Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury right now. And so this whole thing should just come right up. There's one more screw in the back. That's easy. All right, now when you take this thing apart, it looks like something exploded. All right, so here we have the main board. We will have to take it out of here. And um, as you can see, I think some of those capacitors, the little bit of corrosion that is coming off the leads, it has uh, tarnished or corroded some of these copper ground pads here. However, there's plenty left here for uh, grounding purposes, so it's not really that big of an issue. But you know, all these little capacitors here, I'm going to be changing all these out. This is going to be a, quite a bit of work, I guess. Let's uh, take this Windows Accelerator out of here so we can see what's underneath. You want to, the connectors right here, you want to grab it the very edges here and kind of wiggle it out very gently. It's one of these kind of connectors. You don't want to force it out one direction too much, otherwise you might crack the end of the, uh, the connection here, so that wouldn't be very good. And while we're at it, might as well just take this battery out. I'm not sure if this battery is a rechargeable one. It's a VL, VL2330, so a lithium battery. It might be rechargeable. It might, might be one of those rechargeable CMOS batteries. I've seen or I've heard of, uh, while looking up uh, just general AS, AS2 stuff, I heard of a person that had one of these leak on top of here that was uh, affecting some of the video circuitry, uh, not allowing the computer to boot, so... I already looked down there because that one time it didn't really boot right, but I don't really see any corrosion down there, so I don't think that's a problem. But anyway, let's uh, take this thing out of the board. So that's one thing you might want to look out for if you get one of these is just battery corrosion. 
or corrosion in general, as you can see. All right, so let's get this main board out of here. Bam, get the uh, back plate out of here. So that's the big old back plate for this uh, 486 PC-98. Got a lot of chips and stuff on the back. It's kind of got, I kind of like the looks of that. It's pretty cool. So this is, this side's a little bit dirtier. As we can see here, we got our uh, Yamaha chip for sound synthesis. And uh, I think that's probably the BIOS there. This might be some memory. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, that's just, oh yeah, the video hardware. It's, I don't know if this is like the problem with the sound hardware over here, all these capacitors and all this stuff sort of near the uh, Yamaha chip, but that's just uh, my guess. I'm not sure what this jumper here is for, um, this switch to. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it. So I guess I'll start out with this one on the very corner here. As you can see, there's a little bit of a size discrepancy between uh, these two here, but I think we can still squeeze it in there. So with capacitors, obviously, you want to be or paying attention to the uh, polarity. As you can see, this is the negative side here, as indicated by this white stripe. And uh, the board is marked for negative and positive with these little boxes right below the capacitors. So let's uh, remove this capacitor. Uh, these little plastic cases around these uh, capacitors here are kind of glued down, so you want to snap them off the board, at least the top part. And... Uh, Let's see here, I'll just heat up those pads and pull it off. So here we go with my awesome, amazing soldering skills, which are not very good. I'm going to be doing this left-handed because why wouldn't I be? Huh. All right. That's removed. Cool. Might want to wipe off some of that goo shit that's on there, honestly. Um, I think that kind of stinks. Look. <clears throat> Maybe some rubbing alcohol will do the trick. Get some on there and see what happens. There's a little bit of wetness here, so clean that up. I'm gonna try not to get too much stuff on the board today because I do plan on actually running it today. And the one time I did a deep thorough cleaning on my 486's motherboard, I still had some uh, moisture in, I'm thinking, one of the RAM sockets, so it kind of shorted out while it was running. And luckily, the uh, overcurrent protection on those uh, yeah, on those power supplies are pretty sensitive, so uh, I didn't damage anything. So we're gonna put a little bit of solder on the board. Get ready for the new capacitor. Pretty decent sized blob there. All right, so see if I can bend it into a shape here. Maybe kind of like that. I'll turn it, turn it into a surface mount when it's not. So as you can see, this whole process is going to take quite a bit of time. So I'm going to use these pliers here to uh, hold it steady. This will be almost an all-night project, probably. So that's one. Yeah. All right. Let's give it a little bit more solder. That's one capacitor down. I have these little clippy things here. Let me grab them out of my toolbox. 
These will be good for clipping the leads, the excess lead off this uh, capacitor. And voila, we have the first capacitor replaced. I'll probably only record a couple of these because this is going to be a long process and uh, you don't want to sit here and watch me do this for three hours. So there we go. A little piece of crap capacitor has been removed. As you can tell by the surface of the plastic here, if I can get this into focus, well, you can sort of see the value, 4.7 microfarads and then uh, 25 volts. So when you're picking out capacitors, obviously you want to get the same value microfarad, but the voltage can be higher if you can't find the same exact capacitor. I think there's a couple of these capacitors on this board that I had to uh, go with the higher value voltage. And so let's find another 25, 4.7 microfarad, or 25 volt. There's one. Let's break the uh, plastic bit off the board. As you can see, it's kind of wiggling now. Grab your pliers. Heat this bad boy up. Okay. going well. I'm gonna wipe that down. Any any uh, electrolytic fluid off the board so it doesn't cause any more corrosion as seen elsewhere. Give it a little bit more solder. Grab the new capacitor, kind of measure it out. That's kind of not steep enough. Let's try. Let's try that. And that should do. Always make sure that the negative is on the negative. You don't want to install any capacitors backwards, otherwise, you will have problems. Things will not work as intended. All right. So I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm not going to have any clearance issues with the with the uh, whole drive bay on here. If uh, I have to do anything funny with the uh, capacitors uh, connections, if they're too large for the space allotted for them. But, if we do run into that, that will be a problem for another time. Alright, well a few hours later, uh, and a lot of soldering, I got all the caps replaced, and uh, you see all the sur surface mount ones I've uh, replaced. I got these three replaced, that one, just bas basically everything, there, 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 or you can't even see that. So, you know, up there, on the side here, down there, in between there. Some of the ones down here by the uh, headphone jack and all that. So I think I got them all replaced. And uh, some of the through, through hole ones turned into uh, what I would describe an unmitigated trash fire. Since uh, the solder, the old solder inside there would not melt to, uh, could not get it to melt to save my life. So basically this one right here, I turned that one basically into a surface mount as, as uh, with this one. And... Uh, when I had to stick on the bottom because it just would not stick for shit. So that just kind of turned into a mess. But regardless of how it looks, it should work. Now it is time for the moment of truth. The truth moment. I'll turn this thing on and see if it goes kaboom because I probably did something wrong. So it's still mad. Somewhat. Well, I was mad that I uh, disconnected the battery. I'm hearing some crackly popping sound. 
don't know if that was from the speaker or not, but we'll throw in the load runner. The computer seems to be running right, so there's a start. It's a little bit quiet. That's probably just how that is, though. Well, that's interesting. I'm hearing things that I did not hear before when I was running this computer. So I'm thinking, uh, oh wow, I'm hearing more channels than I did before. So that's that's interesting. So I'm thinking, uh, so with with the PC98, you got two different sound generation devices. You got the built-in FM synthesis, which is like just three, uh, the usual three uh, channels. Then you have the the dash 86 compatible sound, which is the other extra three channels. I'll uh, let me just uh, unplug this. This is, this is going to my computer, so and it can go through the uh, stereo. I'll uh, attempt to find the right plug. Line out is the inner one, so we'll just slap that in there. Turn down the volume for just in case something goes wrong. So I'm definitely hearing more channels or sound channels than I was before. So that's cool. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot more sound. Well, not that's supposed to be right now. Well, that is how it's supposed to be, huh? Well, that's the same one. Let's see if we can hear any, uh, well, as you can hear, there's no more pop popping noise going on here. So, let's throw an Evo and see what happens. I'm not smelling anything burning, I'm not seeing any smoke, so I'm assuming I did everything right. Oh, it's a little louder. You don't have that weird distortion in the louder spot, so the sound it, seem, uh, it seems like. Yeah, it's a lot clearer. However, the audio output is a little bit quiet uh, compared to what I thought it would be, but you can see you can hear the. Uh, electronic noise in the background of it so Speaker sounds pretty good too. Not no longer distorted and poppy. All right. Well, yeah, I think that little pop the speaker does when it barely starts up is uh, just the initialization of the sound hardware.
All right. Well, that will be it for our repair video. So that's a that's a fully working uh, PC9821 AES2, I do believe now. I just need to get a hard drive for it and we'll be ready to go. I have returned on the same video and that means bad news. It actually wasn't fixed. About five minutes after I ended the video, the uh, audio would start getting more and more distorted. Well, at least certain parts of the audio, the FM synthesis specifically. I'll post a little, I put a couple of clips up ex uh, as examples of this. So it turns out that the uh, digital to analog converter for the uh, main ship here has uh, gone bad. Well, it's not it's not uh, integrated into the chip. It's a separate chip. It's this chip right here, this uh, YM thirty sixteen or yeah thir YM thirty sixteen. Apparently, that's a chip that's known to go out on some Neo Geo boards. I'm not sure if it, if it was the uh, home system or if it was like MVS boards or something like that. But yeah, that's known to go out. So. I guess it's not too surprising, since this computer also has one. So, I found this out due to uh, some people on Discord explaining to me how the uh, the YM2608B chip works. It's actually just like a amalgamation of a few different chips, including uh, something that does like PCM or yeah, PCM, AD, a, a PCM or whatever the heck it is. I'm not really interested in that, but. Um, so it does the old sound uh, synth from the original PC9801, which you are hearing right here. This It's still audible. That is output directly from this chip as an analog signal, so it's being amplified and then uh, output on the speaker. However, the FM synth from what basically was the, the dash 86, or 80, 9801-86 card has been integrated onto the motherboard, and that is output from this chip in a uh, in a digital serial form into this digital analog converter. And um, I found out that it doesn't work. I had, to, I had to run to work actually to grab my meter. As you can see right here, I get my meter. It's uh, kind of spazzing out. Well, obviously a meter is not the best way to check out uh, like uh, logic going on. It's not like a logic detector. It's not an oscilloscope, but I can get a sort of general idea. At least I do believe. So we have here, are the two output pins, the analog output pins, and you can see um, we got a, sol or a solid uh, 0.865 volts from both uh, output pins. It listens a little bit more, but it's not doing anything. So this digital analog, analog converter is not doing anything. So how would I guess that it's the digital analog converter, not the uh, main y or YM? What is it? 26. 2608B that's not outputting the, ster or the serial signal. So there's two pins on the back of this um, this digital to analog converter chip that if I touch, the first one's gonna be the clock signal that uh, drives it. And obviously uh, this chip has uh, a five volt input. So I think it's gonna be working off of five volt for the uh, inputs and outputs. So if the input is stuck on or the clock is stuck on, it'll be five volts. If it's stuck off, it'll be zero volts. But when I put my uh, meter on that pin, let's see, I think it's this one. Whoop. You get 1.35 volts. So I'm thinking that it's cycling. Otherwise, it'd be closer to this. So we think that the uh, clock is working here. Then if you put, no, oh, that's not the one. There we go. This is the uh, serial input from the uh, the main chip here, and as you can see, it's si or going up and down, which leads me to believe that it's actually outputting something at various rates. So actual data is being transferred here. So if it was stable at a something, maybe it would be a like if it was at a stable voltage, sort of like the clock signal. I would think that it's uh, either stuck in a loop. Or if it's just completely low or completely high, then it would be something bad from that, the YM2608 chip. So, I have ordered some stuff from China. 
Woohoo. Oh, yeah. Also, another thing I did was uh, I removed every single one of the ca capacitors after the sound went away and double checked them to make sure I didn't uh, put anything wrong, wrong and fried them, but they're all good, so it's definitely this uh, DAC chip, I'm pretty sure. I'd say 70% sure. I ordered both of these chips on eBay, so I guess we'll find out in a couple weeks. But at least, at least this sounds louder. I guess that's one plus. I did take care of one issue just to find another one, but hopefully after I resolve this one, there will be no more issues.